If I walked up to you and said, what's this? You'd say, it's easy. It's an avocado. And you'd be right. But what if I asked you, what's this? Or what's this? Or this? Or this? Would you know that these are all avocados? Probably not. And the reason is most of you have never seen one of these before. But everybody's seen these. Which is exactly what I would expect because this guy here, the Haas avocado, makes up 95% of the U.S. market. So 95 out of every 100 avocados consumed in America is a Haas avocado. This is the one you're used to seeing at the supermarket. This is the one you see in your refrigerator at home. This is the one you see at the Mexican restaurant when they wheel out the little cart and do the make the guacamole right next to your table. You might be surprised to learn that there are close to 1,000 named varieties of avocados. They come in all different kinds of shapes, sizes, flavors, textures, colors. And of those 1,000 or so named varieties, about 90 are grown commercially. Here at Sleepy Lizard Avocado Farm, we grow eight varieties, but the lion's share of our avocados are these two varieties, the Choquette and the Monroe. Now these varieties or types of avocados are known as cultivars. These varieties or cultivars are all part of the same species. So this is an avocado, this is an avocado, and they are all part of the avocado species. Within that species, there are three subspecies that can all cross-pollinate with each other and be combined to create new and delicious cultivars of avocado. This guy right here, for example, is a choquette, which is a combination of Guatemalan subspecies with the West Indian subspecies. In order to understand why we have so many varieties of avocado, it might be helpful to understand the history of the avocado. I don't know if this is true or not, but once a week someone wants to send me an email or a text or something with some meme that tells me the word avocado is a Mesoamerican word for testicle. Which tells me that similar to their modern day counterparts, the Mesoamerican male had a proclivity to overstate the size of his genitals. Imagine you're way up there in the Andes Mountains chasing after your llamas or whatever and you, you come across your buddy from the adjacent village and you're like, Hey bro, can I get some of them cherries you're eating? He's like, cherries? In my village, we call these things testicle fruit. And you're like, oh, in my village, we call these testicle fruit. I imagine it went down something like that. Either that or avocados were a lot smaller back then. So how the heck did we end up with a thousand varieties of these things? How the heck did we end up with a hundred of them that we grow and sell commercially? Well, the answer is simple. Genetics. I got what, about a dozen avocados hanging on this tree here behind me. Each of these avocados have a seed inside. Each of these seeds has the potential to germinate and grow into a tree, and that tree will produce fruit. But the DNA contained in the seeds of each of these fruit is not identical. In order to create fruit, this tree had to be pollinated. Pollination occurs when the pollen from one tree is transferred to another, in the case of avocados, via a honeybee. Well, it turns out these trees love to pollinate. They pollinate with each other. They pollinate with trees from farms down the street. They even pollinate with themselves. So the DNA contained in the seeds of each of these fruit is different. Every one of these seeds is gonna produce a different tree. That tree might produce good tasting fruit. That tree might produce bad tasting fruit. That tree might produce no fruit at all. And every now and then, one of them trees, like this one here, grows fruit that turns out to be really, really delicious. And all of a sudden, we've got ourselves a new cultivar of avocado that we would like to replicate. Then somewhere along the line, someone figured out if I cut a little piece off of this tree that's giving me the delicious fruit, and I insert it into a new tree that I'm growing, the resulting tree would be an exact replica of the one you like, and it would give you more of that same delicious fruit. Just like this tree here. Now this isn't an avocado tree, but it illustrates the point. You see here, this is the, the root stock or the part of the tree that was grown from seed. If we just let this grow to maturity, we're playing the genetic lottery. We don't know if we're going to get good fruit, bad fruit, or no fruit. But if we take a clipping from a tree we know is giving us good fruit, and we cut open our root stock, and we insert this clipping into it, then this is what grows. This stops growing and this grows. And this is an exact genetic replica of the tree we want. 
If I liked the fruit that your tree produced, I could take some fruit home with me, but then I'd never get any more. But now I had a way where I could take a clipping of your tree, go back to my village and plant an exact replica of yours. And that is how these cultivars were able to spread from village to village to village throughout Mesoamerica. Eventually, the world got smaller, right? Europeans discovered what they referred to as the New World. They discovered things like corn, tobacco, sugar, potatoes, chocolate. Eventually, some merchant bit into one of these things and said, Wow, I got to bring these back to the queen. These are amazing. What do you guys call these things? Avocados. Oh, what does that mean? Testicle. All right, all right. I'm not thrilled with the name, but maybe we could call them alligator pears. Yeah, give me a thousand crates of these alligator pears and also a thousand crates of that penis fruit. Oh, sir, let me bring you up to speed. Your marketing folks weren't real happy with the whole penis fruit name. We're going with banana for now. See if that resonates with the folks back home. Then one day, in, sometime in the 1920s, a guy by the name of Rudolf Haas or Randolph Haas or something like that, let's just call him Mr. Haas. Old Mr. Haas planted himself three trees in the front yard of his house in Southern California. And his intent was to graft scions from other trees onto the three trees he planted. His grafts didn't take, so he just left the trees to grow from seed. And one of the three trees produced a very interesting looking avocado. Looked a lot like this. And Mr. Haas's daughter loved the taste of that avocado. And they shared it with other people, and other people loved the taste of that avocado. So sometime around 1930, he filed for a patent for the Haas avocado. Then he partnered up with a guy who owned a nursery. And that nursery sold the newly patented Haas avocado to farms throughout Southern California. And it didn't take long for the Haas avocado to catch on. Pretty soon it was outselling other avocado varieties. So farmers began to take clippings of their Haas trees and graft those onto seeds and plant even more Haas. And still more farmers took clippings of those clippings of those clippings. All of which came from the same single mother tree in Rudolf Haas's front yard. And in fact, I believe there's a plaque in place where that tree lived until like early this century, like 2002 or 2003 or something like that. But there's a plaque where the mother tree was. And in less than a hundred years, there's over four billion of these things eaten every year in the United States alone. It is a $2.3 billion industry that started by luck from a guy letting a tree grow to fruit his daughter tasting the fruit and saying, this is tasty. And today we have a multi-billion dollar avocado industry. That story is one of the reasons I find the avocado so endearing. It wasn't engineered in a lab by scientists and botanists. In fact, it wasn't until very recently that more scientific methods were put in place to come up with avocado cultivars. And many of these cultivars share a very similar story to the Haas. Like this Choquette avocado, for example. Guy walked out into his front yard one day to find an avocado tree had sprouted underneath a tree he already had growing there. He transplanted that tree, let it grow to maturity, and 10 years later it started producing enormous, delicious tasting avocados. So he patented it and named it Choquette. And you could probably already guess what his name was. Choquette. Here we have a Lula avocado. Pear-shaped, looks a little different than the other fruit I showed you already. Very similar story. This guy owned a nursery and he, he was growing trees from seed to see what they would produce. He hit the genetic lottery and produced this avocado. His wife, Lula, loved the taste of this fruit so much that when he patented this cultivar, he named it Lula after his wife. So having heard all that, I imagine it's a lot easier to understand how we could have different varieties of the same exact fruit that look so different from each other. Now, as an avocado farmer, people always try to suck me into the debate about which of these fruit is better. And they hate when I tell them I love them. I love them all the same. I love all my babies just the same because this tastes very different from this, which tastes very different from this. Each one has its own unique characteristics that make it suitable for some applications, but not necessarily for others. For example, you'll see here that this Simmons avocado has a beautiful, yellow flesh, whereas the Haas is much more green. The seeds from these varieties are very different. The Simmons variety gives this very large seed, whereas the Haas is comparatively smaller. Another noteworthy difference is firmness of flesh. 
you see here that the Simmons avocado gives a very firm, almost rigid flesh, whereas the Haas is a lot more mushy. So if I wanted to serve, say, spears of avocado, I might choose to go with a Simmons or one of my other Florida varieties, where the Haas lends itself better to spreads and mashed recipes like guacamole. On the other hand, if I'm looking to make a dip or a spread or use as an ingredient, the Haas is very easy to work with, where the Florida avocado kind of wants to retain its firmness, doesn't want to mash as easy. From a flavor perspective, the Simmons avocado, oh gosh, that good. It tends to have a nutty flavor, and like I say, it retains its form in your mouth. It's got its texture, you have to chew through it. Whereas a piece of Haas, feels more like butter in your mouth. Mm. Oh, that is so good too. Nutritionally, pound for pound, the Florida avocado tends to be lower in fat and lower in cholesterol than the Haas counterpart. And when buying these fruit, you need to keep in mind that the Florida varieties are huge. That Simmons avocado there weighs what? 1.67 pounds, whereas a Haas typically comes in somewhere around a half a pound. Let's see. These guys are a little small, so 0.4 of a pound. So we're looking at about one, two, three, four Haas avocados to come close to the size of one Florida avocado on average. Now, if you're one of the millions and millions of avocado lovers out there, it's likely that you've only ever tried one type of avocado, the Haas. And I think you owe it to yourself to try a beauty like this haul or one of these delicious Simmons or maybe a wintertime Monroe or Choquette. Or maybe you could get really lucky and find yourself a Lula. Hell, maybe get a few varieties and have an avocado tasting parties and impress your friends. They'll be like, wow, I didn't know there were so many avocados. And then on the drive home, they'll be to their wife like, can you believe that pretentious asshole with the avocado varieties thinking he's better than us, blah, blah, blah. And one of the places you'll be able to get those fruit, at least when they're in season, is guacfarm.com. G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M.com. That's where we sell our fruit. That's where we sell our stickers that now come in both white background and black background. And if you want to look really cool at your avocado tasting party, you can get yourself a Sleepy Lizard avocado t-shirt. Once again, that's guacfarm.com, G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M.com. One of the nice things about making these videos for you folks is I'm often left with a, with a bunch of food I need to eat. So, so I'm gonna go in the house and eat this food up. You go out to guacfarm.com and get yourself a t-shirt and a sticker. And I will see you on the next video.